I guess it's probably airing it one, so I guess we'll go ahead and get started. So I'm doing BDRFS. It's a fairly new foil system. It's planned. Well, the idea is it's going to be a replacement for X4. Uh, X4 was, developers were basically saying that it was getting crufty. And so Chris Mason, of formerly of Oracle, now of Fusion IO, I believe, started working on a replacement for it about six years ago now. I don't want to close the bell because it's not. I'll be stuck in here forever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even see. You just, when you, when you make the file system, you can just enable compression and it will automatically compress all the foils on it. it if it is not compressed, it can support, it basically has built-in RAID, RAID 1, 10, and 5, and 6. It utilizes B trees, which the other major file system I can think of that does is uh, NTFS. They use B-trace raw disk storage basically as nodes and leaves. Uh, it has reference counting so that it keeps up with what space is no longer being used because it's copy on write. It doesn't just, it uses, it actually winds up using the whole file or the whole disk at some point or another. Which is cool is it's automatic load balancing for SSDs. Um, everything on the disk is checksummed. So if you, and then you can run scrub on it and it'll see, you check your checksums and see if it's anything support. Uh, like I said, optimized for SSDs. Um, biggest one is basically. They got rid of, if you tell it to mount, if you, when you mount options, if you tell it to, that it's an SSD, it will basically not use spinning media optimizations, which are, so in, which actually hinder SSDs. It has built in discard and trim, and you can actually do batch trim, or you can. Or you can do it in real time as as things are today. If you're in a load situation, you can trim and discard until peak load is passed, and then you can do it all your do it all at once when you're no longer hitting it with huge load. So it'll it it that can speed things up in certain. Uh, it actually is really efficient for RAM CPU. Uh, it's not so great on small disks because it tends to use, have a little more meta metadata than a normal, say, X4 system, uh, file system. Uh, one gig or less, which not that long ago would have been huge. But <laughs> so, but if you call it, if when you make your file system with a capital M flag. It will mix your metadata. It won't reserve a chunk of disk for metadata, which is what it normally does. It'll mix it, and so it'll wind up. It, so that way, it doesn't actually reserve the space, and so you can get a little more use out of the disk. Um, by its copy on right nature, like I said, it, it basically is built-in wear leveling by simple virtue of it's not writing to the same space over and over again, set like other file systems do. It writes to a new location every time you write onto a disk. It like, has built-in RAID. Um, and it even has, so when you, when you make your file system, you can tell it to RAID two disks together. And you don't actually have to have it's basically essentially it's a software array, but it's a file system level yeah. software array. And because of that you can do some really cool things. Uh, you can say you can set your say your metadata is just array one, but you can your actual data could be array ten or some combination thereof. 
you can also raid, set the raid level on the individual files on the file system. If they have a file that you really think is important, you can set that, you can, your overall file system can raid one, but you can raid ten that single file. Or, indeed, you can do entire directories and set the RAID on entire directories, yes. Um, you can also set, if you have a RAID one file system, you can actually have a, an individual file or directory that's not RAIDed. So if you're saying build, doing builds in the directory, you can just say no, don't RAID that directory, and that way you'll have improved performance because it's not copying to multiple disks. So we're going to give some demos, and I've never tried to run terminal over. So I'm not quite sure. I'm hoping this will work. Let's see. How do you get term the terminal to show up on the I don't usually use GNOME and I've never hooked it up to a projector before, so. Windows E and Terminal. Sorry? Sit Windows E and Terminal. Well, I've got terminal up, but let's see here. Maybe if we. Somewhere I get the feeling that's something I have to say. In. Rejoice. No, I can't see it. <laughs> okay, so. All right, so. All right, so I've got a few demos set up here. Well, that's not doing anything. Like this is not quite what I wanted, which is basically I was going to show the commands and then actually demonstrate, but I guess I'll just go ahead and do it this way. So, my first little demonstration. All right, so what I've got in this directory is uh, basically a file system image. I went ahead and it's got, I went ahead and put a partition on it, but that's it. No file system is actually on it right now. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do now. I'm going to also sh so I'm going to set the label as dash L for play. 
I'm going to demonstrate the dash M because it's only an 8 gig image. And then and notice it almost instant. And I don't know, I do not have an SSD. But when you create the BTRFS file system, it actually doesn't write anything more to disk. It only, the only thing it writes to the disk is the fact that it's BTRFS, just enough for it to for the kernel to realize that there is actually a file system there. That's it. It doesn't write any. It doesn't create journals. It doesn't do all that. So making the file system is insanely quick. So. All right. So I'm ready. So you into. And there's nothing there because I just created the file system. So I'm going to move over. I'm going to move over some data. You know. Uh -oh. Oh. Uh, we got some data. And so to create a sub volume for the command line, and you know, that's the basic command. And then you like, and then you tell it where you want to put it. Since we're in the BTRFS files right now, I'll just say put it right here. And then name it. Oh, I have a tendency to misspell stuff. There. That was odd. Anyway. So, so what does someone do? And a sub volume is basically as so it's are you familiar with LVM logical volume? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's essentially the same idea. But however, it's treated in much the way, and you'll see it at the top there, BTRFS. When you create within a BTRFS partition, it's basically treated in by the kernel by as a directory. But however, it's a it's a separate chunk within the file system, so you can actually copy it as a separate chunk. So, and then you can also do things on a sub volume such as snapshot it. So I'm going to do it. Put some data in it. So, and as I said, it's it treat the kernel treats it basically as a directory. I can't hide your day, apparently. And by doing sub volume list, you can basically those are the options available. Like for the, it'll list all the um, sub volumes within a particular BDRFS file system. So by putting the path is right there. It shows the one sub volume within it, and it gives you an idea. Generation six, BTRFS has generations. Every thirty seconds, it creates a new generation, and that uh, that is important on rollbacks. I'll get into that in a bit. But so once you have a sub volume, you can do things like. Oh, no, I'll my. You create a snapshot. You can see it's got the same thing as. And what you what it does at first, 
it, it, it's almost like a sim link to a, everything within the sub volume you, you created when you create a snapshot. But as but as it recognizes that files within the sub the original sub volume changes, it will then cre create new copies of them, but keep the old copy of the. So it's kind of like a hard link, but it's not like it doesn't entirely act in the same way. If that makes sense. But it just stores the blocks of the change. Indeed. <clears throat> So it's it, it's pretty efficient in that way, and if the whole file changes, then it'll store the entire new file in the original. But it also applies with the sub volume. Like if I if I say you know, you know, I can delete it, and it changes in the snapshot, but not the original sub volume. It is still in the original sub volume. And then with that, you can basically copy. You can do a snap. If all your data, say for instance, is in a sub volume, you can snapshot it at any point in time and back, use that snapshot as your backup and just R sync it to a, an external disk somewhere. And so it, it makes doing backups insanely cool and easy. Uh, and then once you get done, if, say if you script your backups, you can include in there the script. Say you don't want to waste the, you know, say you want you don't want to clutter up your disk with a gazillion snapshots. So then you can it's gone. So that that's the very basics of snapshotting. Um, something. So I, like I said, you can do things like um, online defragment. Can you actually mount those sub volumes not on the better FS file system but like elsewhere? I yes. You can create mount points for in your file system and mount them. You can also promote the sub volume, right? Yes. Yeah. And online defragment. Of course I don't have very much in there, so it only took no time at all. But And do some cool stuff like that. I guess my next little, my like next little demo, I shall do some braid stuff. Oh, so, and here I've got four file system images. Once again, none of them actually have. Files or none of them actually have a file system on them. They're just blank images at this point. No. To create a basic RAID one, you can do. You can, like I said, you can RAID your metadata and data separately. Well, you're, to create a basic RAID one, you'll want to RAID both your metadata and your data together. So, lowercase m for metadata. And at this point, I could say, I could have said, easily said RAID ten that too.
So I, I'm very ready to do this block two of those file systems together. <coughs> And there we go. And then to mount, I just have to mount the first one. So you just mount the first one in of the list. So, so if you do a DF on mount, what do you have? Um, DF, just plain straight DF lies. Yeah, okay, good. that's what I thought. <laughs> it tells you, I, each of those is 8 gigabytes. It, so, it, you actually, it's actually lying as to how much is available. So, to get the actual... I don't know how much is available, but as you add the data to the mirror, the data counts twice. So it's yeah, so no idea. Yeah. Of that amount, it's available, changes yeah. the data. It, 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 it tells you how much the total number of disks yeah. combined are. So to get what you really want, you and that gives you a actual a, a much better picture. And so why can't he do that? <laughs> because it's a forty-year-old month. Oh, you know, school that kind of sucks. <laughs> Okay, probably back. <laughs> so, say you say you got your array one, and once again I'll copy. I'll copy some stuff into it. So once again we have data in there. So say you're say you're running out of space while it's mounted. You do. Uh, I guess. Okay, while well, it's mounted. Oh, what did I misspell? Oh. <laughs> it helps if I actually specify what I'm adding it to. <laughs> Well, presumably, if you're, I'm not sure. Um, Can you look at green status as you show this dropout or something? I've lost. Thank you. 
Sorry? You should have sent me an email. Yeah, there was. That's it. There hasn't been. There hasn't been. Apparently it's not wanting to tell me that I've filled a disk in it. So I'm going to have to file a bug report on that because it should be showing up in at least the message. So I think I've just found a bug, or at least a lacking feature. Replaced it with one. Okay, well, you deleted four, I believe. Let me check to see what, what's in the. What that was. Okay. Apparently, it's. All still there. No. What one is missing? One is missing, and that was one that I replaced it with. So I think I found a bug in. Is it should be showing up, obviously, and it's not. That the fact that the disk is missing. <laughs> you know. Just to be sure. So curious if you remove the disk and put it back in here. <laughs> I'm going to start removing crap until they mm, force. Just go all the way. Right to it again. Sorry? Right to it again. Right to it right again. Right 
You just can look at the device code. Yeah, it's not really valid. Yeah, it's not. Most of the time, I think the loop device to actually get it. Sorry? You're just removing it like a symbol to a device code. It's not actually removing the loop device from being oh. attached. So if you will set a dash A or whatever, it will show you that you still have all the loop devices attached. Okay. And you can just kill one there. Oh, how about this? Star. But it's still <laughs> 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 then you, you got to remount it. Probably. It's still got the platform. So as long as the files are still in business. I probably should have just done this on a USB drive and yanked it out so <laughs> that it works. <laughs> because that, that would have demoed it properly. So anyway, apparently I'm running out of time. So um, other cool things you can do is more so that I cannot type today. Um, I use BTRFS on my file system, so this becomes a good example, good um, showing this particular command for that reason because this is actually in use. Well, talking about um, generations, is every 30 seconds it basically takes a snapshot of the metadata. Not the actual data, just the metadata, and stores it. So if say, if say generation six or six nine fifty five wound up being bored, you could I could unmount it, mount dash o space recovery, and then usual mount or and then mount points and all that, and it will automatically roll back to the last known good generation. So if you have a, if you mount your disk once a day and you find you've got corruption, you can actually roll back and it'll do it automatically. And this has been in in place since before FS check existed. This was kind of a an FS check before there was an FS check. Now there's also an offline FS check in and of itself that will reco do recovery also, but it uses a lot of the same principle in the way it works. You can also convert X4 X3, and X3 disks to BTRFS. The command is BTRFS-convert, and then you just put in the device name. This is offline. This is one of the few commands that you do offline. And it'll convert your X4 disk to BTRFS, and it'll save the X4 file system intact as a snapshot. So you can actually and if you don't like BTRFS, you can actually go back and replace your BTRFS with the original X4. And if you do like BTRFS, you just delete the snapshot, you regain the disk space. Mm -hmm. So it's very cool and things you can do like that. Um, by going back, you just uh, <coughs> you, when you you do BTRFS convert dash R and you'll Revert it. So this would be a good time to ask, how production ready? <laughs> <laughs> um, I use it on pretty much all my devices. Uh, you actually saw it in action this morning because she had to borrow my flash drive and it has BTRFS on it. I, it's, I think it's ready. Oracle is shipping with it. Uh, Susie is shipping with it. There was, a scary, there was a scary message when you ran MakeFS. <laughs> so, oh, well, yeah, Chris wasn't being pretty, but... <laughs> well, there, there are things that if you do... There are kernel config options that have been enabled in everyone's kernel for years that stay, will say, experimental. So... So, I guess, what are, the, what are the reasons that some people think it's not red, even if you don't agree with it? Um, some people think that it still has issues in terms of uh, data corruption. And on my end, I've actually had more X4 data corruption issues than I have I've had with BTRFS. The, the one time I did have data corruption with BTRFS, I did the whole mount dash o recover and it rolled back and it was fixed. I lost, I lost the 
the last five, five minutes of work I, I'd done. But basically, I had a power in failure, and my la my battery died on me when I was working. So I lost like five minutes of work, but it, the rest of my file system was fine. One of the problems that some of this has been worked on is that if you're running virtual machines on it, the performance is really bad. That's improving and yeah. much improved. But it's uh, our, got a lot to go. Um, there, I believe there's some work being done in regards to virtual machines of being able to use snapshots as a virtual machine image. So that would be a real cool thing. What about when the disk fills up? You know, used to do that, you know, do that thing. Um, unfortunately, it's still not that great at handling a full disk, but it doesn't, you don't die. You don't have velociraptors attacking when that happens. <laughs> you don't physically die. Your data might. <laughs> no, your data will still be there. It's possible to get it off. It's just. It's not fun. But X4 is also not fun when you fill the disk up. So, you know. It's slightly less fun than a full X4 file system, but still, it's. What's the uh, ideal threshold um, you have to have a um, Probably about 2 or 3 gigs. If you say if you have a 500 gig disk. Mm -hmm. I'd say leave two or three gigs empty. Well, you know, and then if you're if you're getting close to full, you can just raid five it. <laughs> and you're good to go. Have you played it with uh, deduplication at all? I have not. It's that is it is in place. You have data, it has built in data do do. And that was hard to do because of the copy and write nature of the file system. Um, I just I don't run any major service where dedupe is needed. Itself, so it's, I basically use it on my home system. I've got a NAS. The biggest thing I have is I, I have a NAS with two, three terabyte drives, RAID ten together. And that's the biggest thing I have disk wise. But the uh, as I understand it, the, uh, the DDU is a separate user space utility that we don't package. Is that correct, or am I missing something? Yes, you're correct. Um, but it, once again, it's online. Yeah. That's one of the cool things about BTR. Oh, it's it's online, but it's not inline. So CFS, for example, is inline DDU. Yes. And so the, reason it's, the reason it's not inline is, once again, because of the copy on right nature. It's, the, it's difficult to handle. Well, CFS is copying as well, but it takes a lot of memory to do. And yeah. To do as well. so you have to sort of hold the table better. Indeed. So yeah, it's for that. That's why it's not built in to the file system itself. Any other questions? Unicorns. Oh, um, the snap. Uh, the default is snapshots are arrival, which is cool. Yes, is there is there we yet have a way to make you can there is an there is an op, an option to make a uh, read only snapshot. Okay. I mean, Could you demo the FSCK? Sorry. Could you demo the FSCK? All right. So I'm gonna have to. It's off. That's one of the few things that's offline. Okay. <laughs> ah, there we're finally getting errors. <laughs> <laughs> No, because it's got a it's got a partition or a GPT for partition table on it. Like, it works. Let me let me. Okay. 
I mean, even if I were to demo it, it would there's no real errors there, so there wouldn't be anything to um, really for it to fix, if that makes sense. Where did my mouse phone go? There we go. Why don't you just write some random data for this? Let's see here. Write random data? Yeah, just inject some random data and so we can afford the uh, or zero. Can you echo that? Oh, helps if I do. Why am I still? Because, because bash completion is pulling on the device access from the same device link. <laughs> <laughs> now what what I have to have current any inputs I mean the input file for is dev new random. Oh 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 Actually, we don't really pay that, so it's like U random is oh, okay. <laughs> sure, sure. pseudo random, whereas random is stall. I know, I just have to have a keyboard in or a keyboard. Big difference. So it's random is higher quality. We don't care how high uh, quality <laughs> random is for corruption. <laughs> I just dumped 15 or 16 megs of randomness into there. Yeah, you're right. Well, that might be the wrong one, too. So. <laughs> On low set of dash A to find out which look devices have to which file. Sorry? LO set space dash A. Hello? Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> And it uh, it recovered automatically. And you just saw how I injected a bunch of 16 megs of randomness into it. Is the recovery stuff a DMSR? Somewhere something should tell you that it should happen. Sorry. I injected 16 megs of randomness into the well the image, and it's still melting. So I'm going to call that. Pretty robust. If you all want, I can do it again. Actually, inject non randomness. Inject like hello world into it or, or, or a, bu a bunch of stuff and hello world and then from see, it, see if it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do that? She really should use me for this. Just cap. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Um, echo. 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 That's why I'm saying if you make a mess, I don't want to stitch the stitch you sitting there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I killed the whole process. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's going to Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> but not really, because the, the, yeah. it's the same. The image file's already open from the LO setup stuff, yeah. so it, it didn't really make that much difference. Well, nowadays. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, I think the file handle's already open by the kernel. So yeah. Uh, uh, it didn't really make, yeah. you didn't really do anything to it. But he didn't kill the first thing. Thank you.
Except not. I mean, you can kill the file system, but you're, it's still looking in the block cache. Yeah. It's not good. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Apparently it did delete, so anyway. Oh. Yeah. GPT is complaining, so we obviously now at this point have something worked. Mm -hmm. So, I just tagged it. <coughs> oh. It helps if I use the right command. How's it mounted? Saying there's no partitions, then it's, it's that means your file system is pretty forced. So anyway, I think we're out of time. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to figure out a way, better way to demo forking the file system than injecting random stuff into the image, because that obviously ate up the master boot record and all that too. So. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Well, 